Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, actually, we're right here in Westboro, is my, where my office is. But this is not about my day job, it's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you haven't seen the show before, Frank and Mary's goal in life is very simple. They wanna live in their house until they die. They wanna be buried in the backyard. They don't wanna be buried in San Diego with their kids or at far away Marlboro where I live. They wanna be buried in Westboro. So the question is, if you're like Frank and Mary, how can you, who are the people you need to know? What are the programs you need to know about in order to stay right here? My co-host is Shelby Marshall. A few people know me, everybody knows Shelby um, because they do, because she's a selectman now and she's been there not forever, but like for this is her fourth, fourth, fourth year. Um, and she finds these great guests. We've got some great guests today. And apropos uh, of the fact that Memorial Day is uh, coming and will be in, and this show is being actually filmed before Memorial Day. Shelby, whom do we have today? Yeah, so uh, good morning, Arthur. Great to see you as always. Um, really um, pleased, happy, and honored to have uh, John Galena and Justin Souza here. Um, they represent our veteran services um, uh, team, if you will, department here at the town. And uh, we're gonna turn it over to them to tell us all the great things that they do. John is also a member of the Veterans Advisory Board, which is a um, you know, volunteer resident run uh, organization. Um, so we're gonna talk about both services and um, um, the uh, advisory board. So welcome John and Justin. Thank you. And I just want to know like what the time difference is to Hawaii, right? Because I'm seeing, and, and, and whether you like, you, he has to, he gets like extra pay for being broadcasting actually from the beach. He's kind of like, yeah, outside, you know? yeah, we, we have, he's got a whole TV crew there. Justin does on the beach. That's great. Yeah. That's great. I, I, yeah, I wish. <laughs> uh, nope. It's just uh, my cell phone and uh, the time delay is actually not too bad. Um, <laughs> Okay. So, so Justin, since you're on, let's let's start with you. So, Justin, what do you do okay. here in the town? And um, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, my official title is the director of veteran services, um, and I technically work for a district that uh, includes Westboro. It's called the Central Mass Veteran Service District, and it um, covers Westboro, Northboro, Grafton, and Shrewsbury. Um, I'm very lucky to have uh, 19 hours a week part-time agent John. Uh, who is here uh, with us today. He works out of the Westboro office um, and, and is uh, the, like the primary contact for the district. So he's here uh, in Westboro every day from nine to one uh, on Fridays from nine to 12. Uh, so if you call the Westboro uh, number, uh, you will most likely get to talk to John. And if not, you'll leave a message and John will call you back. Uh, he's so good at phone calls. He, he is. Uh, John, you're, you're a lifesaver when it comes to that stuff. Um, well, he's from so, the Navy, right? That makes sense. Lifesaver Navy, right? Yeah. It's like a perfect role. <laughs> so he, um, so what John does is he, he runs the office in, um, in Westboro and um, provides a primary contact for the district. And then uh, he also is involved with the Westboro Veterans Advisory Board, which I'll let him explain at, uh, after I'm done. Um, my, de my role as the director of veteran services is I make sure that um, any veteran who is looking for uh, access to uh, federal, state, or local veterans services or benefits uh, of any sort, if the word veteran is associated with it, I should or probably do know about it and I can help that person get access to it. Um, what that means is we help um, uh, veterans sign up for VA healthcare uh, and apply for VA compensation um, through uh, the Veterans Benefits Administration, uh, filing a VA claim. And then we help with uh, state benefits such as Chapter 115 for our um, lower income veterans who may need some financial assistance. Um, and then we also help um, access local property taxes, uh, exemptions, and, uh, and pretty much we act as a point of contact for for veterans if they're curious about um, any anything to do with the government uh, we, we can we can usually find out who they need to talk to so justin i'm curious um i know sort of related to um my professional business what i actually get paid to do um and that is taking care of folks as they age um there is a benefit called veterans aid and attendance so 
It's yep. a supplemental benefit that helps not only veterans, but their uh, surviving spouses um, uh, with home care, with uh, payment and assist, you know, residential type care. Um, what are you seeing just, you know, whether it's that or signing up for veteran services, how long should folks plan for, you know, kind of to, you know, kind of get on board with services? And I know that that's a wide ranging question, but just it, the government isn't, isn't yeah. a simple uh, infrastructure. So curious to your thoughts on that. So the, um, there's two sort of aspects to the aid and attendance. Um, the first is if you're collecting um, disability compensation uh, as a service-connected veteran, you have to be at 100% um, rating, uh, meaning that your cumulative total of disability ratings is 100%. And at that time, you can apply um, for an additional special monthly compensation uh, called aid and attendance. But then on the that's on the disability side. On the VA's non-service connected pension side, there is uh, three levels to the non-service connected pension, the regular pension, the housebound pension, and then the aid and attendance. Um, it, it, it's, I think it's a non-service connected pension with improved pension amount for aid and attendance or something like that. It's a long, <laughs> long title, but basically everyone knows it as aid and attendance or ANA. And ANA, um, it can take anywhere from three to nine months to kick in, depending on your uh, medical, uh, well, financial and medical. I put that together into <laughs> medical. I like that. That's uh, an yeah, depending purpose. on your medical needs, right? Uh, financial and medical uh, needs. So um, financially, there's. Do you want me to go into that? No, or? you don't have to go. But just, I, I think it's really important. In fact, I was just having this conversation with my dad, who's a Navy veteran. And mm -hmm. and I think one of the things I'd love to hear from you, I was trying to stress is, is the importance of even just gathering paperwork, making sure you have, you know, I don't know if it's a discharge, but I'm not even sure, to be honest with you, what paperwork folks need. But um, if folks had questions, obviously, those are the things that they do. They call you or they call John, right? And they Correct. say... I may, I, I am in need of X and I want to apply, is there a benefit for this and what kind of documentation do I need, right? Yes, uh, so we and have- Can uh, I just throw in, throw oh, in sure. one thing? Sure. You want to talk to these people and they're probably the only people who understand this. I, you know, I, I will get questions from clients. Right. You know, we'll be talking about a whole bunch of talk about mass health and Medicare and this stuff. They'll say, well, what, if, you know, and what about the veteran's benefit? I go, uh, here's the person to talk to. <laughs> Because it, it is a specialized, I guess I can't emphasize it enough. It is a specialized, very large federal bureaucracy, which has its own kind of custom, its own rules, its own kind of informal rules. Mm -hmm. You want to be talking to these guys. I just want to, re, re, from, from my perspective. Right? I would recommend if you're doing any type of estate planning as a senior um, and you're a veteran or a surviving spouse of a veteran who is not remarried, then you can, uh, you should include at least a call to our office um, to talk about the aid and attendance um, or the, the pension uh, and find out what you would need to do to apply for it. Uh, Cause there's a three-year look back, just like Medicare's five-year look back. There's a three-year look back. You have to have, uh, you can't have more than so many assets. Um, they look at like your, your property and um, that. And then, then you also have to have a medical need for it. So you have to have like uh, someone helping you with a couple of things. Yeah. Uh, to qualify so there's there's a lot to do it and then the documentation to prove all that is really where I come in um, so we have a checklist and a packet of forms that if someone calls we pretty much just fire that off to them via email or, or mail great. and John has been uh, uh, doing a great job making sure that people that call in get the paperwork um, we've uh, recently started uh, educating him on our computer uh, we're gonna start educating him on our computer system that we use to file claims um, as soon as we get a login for him, um, and then uh, he'll be he'll be pretty much, I think, ready to go. You know, I'll always be available for questions, but he's uh, he's been fantastic uh, helping people who call in. And Justin, you um, are a veteran as well, is that correct? Yes. So to be a veterans agent, uh, an official veterans agent, you have to be a veteran. Um, okay. And that is according to the Massachusetts guidelines. So I'm I am a veteran. Um, uh, John is a veteran. And um, if we have ever like admin staff, they don't necessarily have to be veterans, but if you're a veterans agent and that's your job title, you have to be a veteran. So we get it. Um, if you're a veteran and you need someone to kind of talk to, you can start with us and then we can, we can point you to the people that can uh, probably help because 
we don't have a lot of time to talk to you, but we do enjoy, that's my favorite part of the job is, is uh, talking with veterans and their families, uh, you know, hearing their war stories and uh, we're hearing the families like say, wow, I didn't realize this is what you did. And the veteran's like, yeah, that's, that's what I did. And they're usually so <laughs> right. hard. If well, I you can just, relate. Go ahead, John. Yes. If I could just interject. Uh, Justin is a, a U.S. Army uh, medic, served in Afghanistan, I think, for almost a year. Correct? Correct. Yep. Just want to make sure that's part of the record. One of the important documents that veterans are required to have in order to get access to, whether it's the federal services or the uh, state services, is what is called a DD-214, which is really, a, a, it's a copy of their service record. It would show uh, dates and times served on active duty. It would show that whether they were discharged on an honorable basis, which is a requirement to get access to the program um, and uh, rank and service and stuff like that. But that's, uh, that's a key document. I get, I would say every week, I get two or three calls from veterans that are looking for copies of the DD-214 for a variety of reasons, some to get access to the healthcare system, some for other personal reasons, they just want a copy of it. Justin, John, is that something that um, obviously someone could ask you um, how to do that, but is there like, do you go to like va.gov and there's a process of how do you request the DD-214? No, no there's, uh, the VA. There's, there's, there's two ways. One is um, if the veteran enlisted in Massachusetts, uh, Massachusetts has a, a database that we can access almost, you know, once we log in and uh, pull up their DD-214 and uh, make a copy PDF okay. and send it to the veteran. Uh, the other, I'll let Justin address it. It's a little more convoluted, particularly because of COVID-19, yeah. where they have to apply online to the archives. Justin, you want to take that on? Sure, sure. And uh, just for the record, I want to, I want to say that uh, John is from the Navy. Uh, he was a, uh, was it a paymaster on, yeah. uh, on an aircraft carrier, the USS, uh, don't tell me, don't tell me. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. The yeah. S, oh, okay. All right. I was close. I had it on the tip of my tongue, but uh, yeah. So he's, uh, he's, he was there for, uh, um, uh, was it a year during the Cuban Missile Crisis? Or Basically, if, uh, yeah, we I had two deployments. One was, um, we were actually down in Guantanamo when the Cuban Missile Crisis struck. Uh, the carrier that I was on was uh, converted to an anti-submarine warfare. So uh, our primary mission, there were three Russian subs that were trying to bring in nuclear missiles to Cuba. And our mission was to locate them and prevent them from getting into Cuba, and we were successful, I might add, uh, in doing that. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it, um, but uh, that was that mission lasted about five months, and then we came back, home ported out of Quonset Point, Rhode Island, and then we deployed again to him um, for about another five or six months to enforce the uh, quarantine or the embargo against Cuba, and our main mission there was stopping uh, Russian supply ships and inspecting them and stuff like that. Wow. History right before that. us. That's amazing. No, for the scary time. <laughs> I, no, I was a little, I remember I was a little kid. That was a scary time. I and mean, you were the payment. That was a very important job. You were, you were paying all the people who were doing all that stuff. That, that's what's interesting is this is before computers and internet. So basically what we had to do, we pulled into Norfolk, Virginia and picked up a million dollars in cash <laughs> and uh, what we'd have to do every two weeks uh, in the hangar bay, we would pay the crew and they would use this money to buy, I hate to say it, cigarettes, yeah. Cuban gum, stuff like that. And um, so during the blockade, um, one of our ships, um, escort ships, a destroyer, didn't have any cash. And so the crew didn't have any money to buy stuff. So they highlined me from the carrier to a freighter to a destroyer and i i went on board with a bag of cash with a bag with a bag of money oh that's great that's great 
Wow, he's like he's like the James Bond, right? Like putting <laughs> it on the line. I love oh, it. Oh, I, I can't imagine doing the high line. That's why I joined the army. Boots on the ground for me. Thank you. The ground doesn't move. The ground's always there, and uh, it's safe. But so getting back to the uh, our national archive. Um, so if we can't find the DD-214 in the state database, uh, we can always ask the state uh, military records branch, um, who actually uh, Mike Perna, the part-time agent that we have working with us in Shrewsbury um, on Thursdays, he is the chief of the military records branch. So we kind of have a, an in with, you know, I shoot him an email and he gets his guys to, and uh, his people to look it up uh, if in uh, hard copies if they don't have it on the state database uh, or if it's like a national guard um, discharge the NGB form 22 is not on the database. It's in a hard copy. So they have to go physically access a filing cabinet in their giant filing room. Um, so if the state doesn't have it, if we can't find it anywhere, um, we can assist doing a uh, national archive request where we advise you to go online um, because it's all there's a digital man, man, uh, manner to do the application and uh, you still have to sign the last page and fax that to the archive but because of covid they reduce their staff significantly and we're are really only doing emergency requests such as discharge forms required for military honors and funerals or uh, for homeless veterans to re receive housing um, they're not they're not managing the um, regular requests for DD-214s for non-emergency purposes uh, as quickly. I think uh, last I heard they had close to, I want to say a quarter million requests for DD-214s that they're going to have to get through. Um, so they're going to be backed up for a little while. Um, so if you have a copy of your 214, make sure you make a couple copies of it and put it, you know, disperse it so nothing bad happens to it. Um, put it in a lockbox or keep it at your lawyers, you know, something like that. If, uh, I don't know if you guys do that. But. Yeah, no, so, that's great. That's um, and really that helpful. Anywhere, Thank sorry, Joby, uh, no. I just want to put that takes anywhere from 10 to 90 days if it's not an emergency request. Usually an emergency request can be done within 24 hours. Um, so, um, John, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, just kind of looking at the time we have with both of you today. Tell us a little bit uh, more about your uh, role as an agent. Um, how long have you been an agent here in Westboro? I moved to Westboro in 1975. And, um, and did, you've been a veterans agent for? I, I think I'm, I'm heading into my fourth year, I think okay. sometime later this year. I, I took over from uh, Ken Ferrara, who was a longtime veteran service officer. He served the town for about uh, 12 plus years. And um, I worked under him as a backup um, while he was preparing to um, go into retirement. And uh, so I took over his role, which is being a member of the Veterans Advisory Board, but also secretary uh, to, the, uh, to the board. So I maintained the agenda, the minutes, all that kind of stuff. And um, um, basically the role of the Veterans Advisory Board is to, it's made up of a volunteer group of veterans. And um, the main purpose is to uh, provide support and services to the veterans in the town of Westboro. And um, we've, over the years, we've undertaken a number of uh, missions uh, to accomplish that. Uh, we've done uh, care packages to um, active duty troops uh, located in you know, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we um, also uh, primarily as a BSO working with the advisory board, uh, our main two big functions are normally Memorial Day and uh, Veterans Day. Unfortunately, due to COVID last year and due to COVID this year, we're holding just a virtual event. We did a filming uh, in conjunction with Westboro TV on May the 10th. They will run it on Memorial Day continuously. And uh, we're hoping that with the governor lifting the restrictions, um, when Veterans Day comes around, we'll have our normal parade and so on and so forth and ceremonies in, in, in person. So um, yeah, so basically one, one important message I would send out to all of our vet veterans in the town of Westboro is that when the census comes out, uh, there is a box that you can check off that you're a veteran. And by doing so, uh, we have a, 
the state runs a database for us, and I use that database to send out communications to all of our veterans in town. And as I stated earlier, we've just started issuing a newsletter to all of our veterans in town. And right now, that number is roughly 550 plus veterans. And the quarter newsletter uh, starts out with topical information from town, what's going on in town, and so on and so forth. And then we also include um, a PDF from the VA featuring particular services of, at, whenever we send out the, uh, the, the, um, the newsletter. So, so what, what we've been doing is we've been expanding our outreach program, which would include um, Facebook. We have a Facebook page. We also have an active uh, website on the town website where we post a lot of information for veterans that they can go and look up, look up information. Um, right now, um, uh, we just ran flags on the rotary for Armed Forces Day, for example, and uh, so far we had 4,935 people connect with us. So it's really, that's a very, very important tool to um, communicate with the town at large, but in particular for our veterans. Um, some of the other things we do, we have, as I said, we, I manage the Facebook, face, Facebook page. I manage the uh, website for the, uh, for the town. Um, I'm also a member of the VFW and the American Legion. So I help them in terms of gaining membership. So I do periodic mailings on their behalf as well. Um, as I said, we mentioned that Memorial Day is one of the big topics and it's gonna be somewhat subdued this year for the various reasons due to COVID. Uh, some of the other things that we've done um, on a periodic basis, we uh, sponsor this Quilts of Valor, which is a way of honoring um, veterans who have served. And our focus mainly for this past year has been on World War II veterans living in the town of Westboro. And of course, that's a number that's diminishing almost day by day. And so we'll move on probably to Korean veterans uh, going, going, going forward. And basically it's a really nice ceremony where this organization, Quilts of Valor, they create this quilt. Uh, we have a ceremony where we wrap the veteran in the quilt, thank, thanking them for their service. So that, that's something that we're really, really proud of. Uh, we do clothing drives. We just completed a winter clothing drive in conjunction with uh, Westboro High School in December of last year. And um, we were able to um, generate four truckloads of, not truckloads, SUVs, loads of uh, clothing, which we took to Veterans Inc. in Worcester, which is a home for homeless veterans and people, veterans that are in transition that have either fallen on hard times, whatever, and are looking for a way to um, reestablish their, uh, their life. Um, we have a number of um, outreach programs. We visit with the local nursing homes on a periodic basis. Uh, we're going to be holding a visit um, on Memorial Day to the uh, Highlands uh, Nursing Home uh, just to recognize all the veterans that are living there thanking them for the service. Um, the Girl Scouts, I believe, are gonna be writing cards which we will deliver. And then Westboro Connect, another great Westboro organization is also writing cards for veterans, so we will deliver them as well. Most recently, we delivered plants uh, to all the veterans in, in these nursing homes. Um, flag placements, we have uh, four, four annual projects that we um, normally put flags on the rotary. Uh, Memorial Day is normally when we do it, but there was a conflict with Armed Forces Day. So we just had the flags on for Armed Forces Week. So I'm sad to say there's no flags on the Rotary for Memorial Day. Uh, in addition, we place flags on the graves of all of our veterans uh, prior to Memorial Day at the four uh, cemeteries in town. Again, using volunteers from the Westboro High School, sometimes the Girl Scouts, sometimes the Boy Scouts and of course, member of veterans of the advisory board. Um, July 4th, we're gonna be putting flags on the rotary again. They will be up there, I believe for about two weeks. Um, and then the final flag placement would take place uh, during uh, veterans, uh, veterans Day week. 
Uh, John, you, um, do, you do you do a ton. You guys do a ton of stuff. There's just it's like it's pretty constant, like throughout the year, right? Which is yeah. a, a pretty a pretty wonderful service. Now, I think as, John as, works as, forty hours a week, well, not nineteen. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but he, and he and, but he's the paymaster. He pays himself, right? That's he, right. <laughs> <laughs> So I, as, I, as I mentioned to you gentlemen, before we start, my job is to provide comic relief and keep time. And I'm watching my clock and knowing that at the end of each show, I try to give Shelby a couple of minutes just to talk about what's happening if, because it is an ongoing matter. This is a weekly show. We try to keep people in touch with what's going on at the selectman's office or if there are other crucial things. So if you don't mind, I'm just gonna ask Shelby to, to you know, give us a couple of minutes, right? On what's going on. Sure, uh, so really quickly, um... I do want to say that at the end of the show, um, Aiden will put up a slide for contact information for our veterans office, as well as the Facebook link. So I encourage folks uh, to check it out and um, uh, give John a call. Uh, great guy, um, extremely responsive. And I want to thank both Justin and John, um, you know, for their service, not only before Westboro, uh, but currently. Um, with respect to work of the select board last night, I encourage folks to watch uh, the meeting. Um, but basically we met with the Board of Health and agreed that uh, we would follow the governor's orders um, in terms of kind of rescinding the COVID restrictions. Uh, we'll be having further discussion in terms of the letter that ultimately we wanna send forth to the governor uh, in our legislative delegation regarding virtual meetings or the ability to continue to meet virtually as well as an extension of outdoor dining services. Um, so those are sort of still in the process, but. Uh, town hall, all the town buildings are open. Folks are asked to just wear a mask. If you have not been vaccinated, the plexiglass is gonna stay up just for everyone's sort of comfort level. Um, and, um, uh, you know, just asking everyone to, uh, Westboro is, um, I think it's 58% of Westboro residents have been fully vaccinated and about 70% have at least one shot. So that's, that's great, um, but we've got still a ways to go. And just with a closing comment in recognition of Memorial Day, I just have a quick quote and, and Arthur, you can close it out. And that is, our flag does not fly because the wind moves it. It flies with the last breath of each soldier who died protecting it. Oof. That's, that's a good quote. On that, on that note, uh, gentlemen, I really appreciate, we really appreciate you both coming on. Justin, my, uh, my son was a medic in Afghanistan twice. Right. Oh wow. So we, we appreciate we appreciate your service. Those were scary times, you know. It, and Shelby, thank you very much. John, thank you very much, you know, for all the information. Folks, the as Shelby said, the information is available for you. If you got any questions, give these folks a call. They're nice guys, right? And wow. they want to help you and they identify with you as veterans. And they both got stories. I can tell they both got stories. <laughs> uh, and so thank you all for joining us and we'll look forward and thank you Shelby for inviting these great guests and we'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you very much. Thank you.